I've done a lot of interviews, so I'm shagged out. <laughs> oh, I see. Old British expression. Ah, how many uh, interviews did uh, you do so far? You are number 10. Number 10? <laughs> 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 uh-huh. Han Benink. I quite enjoyed your show last night. Oh, good. Yes, and um, I enjoyed the new album. Uh-huh. Um, I think your playing has kind of uh, evolved and changed recently. Yeah, so, sure, yes. sure. More jazz, more yes. acoustic. Yeah. Freer, looser. Yeah. In some ways. Yeah. And the music is, uh, I mean, it's, there's like, it's always something happening. Like, you know, like when I was seeing you perform, um, it's constantly different changes and you're yeah. watching and, you know, uh-huh. and so. Sure. Um, and the music is kind of like, uh, exciting in the way that um, let's see, early '60s jazz was like uh, British vanguard. Uh, oh, well, I hope so. Yes, should be exciting. Yeah, yes. it, it is uh, the, the classical jazz quartet sound. Yes, you know which yeah. we all know very well. Yeah. So the interest becomes in how you arrange for that. Yeah. And what can you bring to it that's a little different? Yes. And I think I bring some odd metered rhythmic material that's unusual in yes. that genre. Yes. Um, yeah, you've always had a distinctive style in drumming. Um, uh, but it's, it, your style has changed from like the first period with Earthworks. Um, yeah, very In that much time, so. I think that um, uh, it was more on the rhythmic groove. And uh, you would put in very distinctive kind of fills, you know. Yes. Uh, there was more. Um, like kind of funk grooves. Yes, true, yes. true. Um, but also the big difference is yes. that the first band was electronic drums. Yes. You know. Yeah. That's the big difference. Yeah. Um, the electronic drum kit forces you to play in a certain way. Yeah. Which is interesting. Yes. Um, but for many years I played that, and now I just want to go all acoustic. Yeah. Um, at the same time, it's kind of like you're doing a kind of melodious approach, you know. And yeah. uh, is there a kind of influence from doing electronic drums for? Absolutely. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Uh-huh. Um, I love the idea that the drummer has melody. Yeah. Thank you. I always heard from my early days, you know, the the, the melodies in the drums. Yes. Particularly with Max Roach. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. And I liked all that. Yeah. And electronic drums. Yes. Enabled me to really play tunes. Yeah. So on the band's first three CDs, yeah. the drummer carried the harmony yeah. often by playing chords oh, yeah. from the pads, yes. like Bridge of Inhibition, and yeah. Stromboli Kicks, yeah. Yeah. Pilgrim's Way, yeah. some of these titles. Yeah. Uh, so I really was playing the tune, mm. and I loved that. I thought that was great. Yeah. But the technology ooh, uh-huh. was old fashioned. Yeah. Very difficult, very expensive, yeah. very unreliable, yeah. a real headache. You know? yeah. So now I, I write the uh, the melodies that I want in yeah. the compositions yeah. and play it that way. Yeah. Very rhythmic. Yeah. Great dances they have. Yes. That would be like a dance. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, I've noticed that you know in a lot of some, some other pieces there are kind of melodies like that as well, like uh, uh, in the new CD, the uh, first piece and uh, the last piece. The, and the last piece, surprise, yeah, yeah. The wooden man sings and the stone woman dances. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know, yeah. sort of a fugue and, and, and a fast dance yeah. feel to it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, which the jazz musician and the audience can connect. Yeah. Is through dance. Yeah. You know, they always have connected through yeah. dance, actually. Yeah. But now the dance is a mm. Romanian dance. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You know, uh-huh. that sort of influence is really strong. Yeah. I love that. Uh-huh. So you've listened to quite a number of uh, Romanian gypsies? Uh, yes, sure. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm, but I'm no student uh-huh. of, of anything. You, yeah. know, uh, you know, it's because you hear so much music. You yeah. know, taiko drumming here, yeah. you know, Brazilian oh, yeah. samba here, oh, yeah. Romanian gypsies here, yeah. you know, art rock here. Yeah. It all just is, is a mess. You yeah. know? It's earthworks. Yeah. It's, we take the music from everywhere. From different parts of the yeah. yeah. And the only th- good thing about being British yeah. is that we have no rhythmic culture of our own at all. Uh-huh. You know, the British and rhythm yeah. are terrible. Oh. So I take all my rhythm from everywhere else. 
Oh, I see. I steal uh -huh. it. Yeah. Like a like a, a cuckoo. Yeah. Like a uh -huh. uh, like a, a like a bird. You oh, know, yeah. Takes from here and here uh -huh. and here, and builds a nest. Mm. But that's the glory of jazz now. Yeah. You know, it started as yeah. um, uh, from the, from of course yeah. uh, uh, African American yeah. music, but yeah. that in itself yeah. was a fusion of Spanish music. Yeah. You know, African American music. Yeah. So that was a mess too. Mm -hmm. And now jazz is an international sport. Yeah. You know, so now we take yeah influences from everywhere. Yeah. Earthworks. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's liberated so many of us. Yeah. Actually, mm -hmm. the influence of world music. Yeah. And the permission, if yeah. you like. Yeah. To to mix it all up. Yeah. You know, you know, we can fly from London to Tokyo yeah. to Rio de Janeiro and back again yeah. in two days. Yeah. You know, and the world is getting so small. Yeah. And very rarely these yeah. days do you yeah. find someone who yeah. insists yeah. that the music has to be done this way yeah. only. Yeah. Most people say, "Ah, that's interesting." Yeah. Wow, you th you put that with yeah. that and you get that. Yeah. That's great. Mm -hmm. You know, most people are very open-minded. Yeah. Open ears, you know. Yeah. So uh, you're not doing much, let's say, work for other players or session work, or not much. Not much. I let's made see. two albums last year uh -huh. with um, a, a guy who you might know in Japan. Uh -huh. I forgot his name. Japanese? No, no. no. Um, American. American. Uh -huh. From Seattle, and he has a group called the Gordian Knot. Ah, oh. I've heard of it somewhere. Uh, Gordian Knot, and yeah. Uh, oh man, I forgot his name. Never mind. And I made a, a record for a French composer called Jean Philippe Goud, uh -huh. um, which again was it was almost like chamber rock. Oh. Very nice music, very uh -huh. unusual yeah. systems music, uh -huh. but kind of chamber style. Uh -huh. And I, I made a record for him too. Uh -huh. uh, but I, I only try to accept the things that I think I can contribute to. Uh, contribute to yes. exactly. Uh -huh. Just to play the beat is is oh yeah, it's not so good. Oh know. yes, yeah. I used some bits of your sampling CD, actually. Uh, oh, did you? Yes. You found that? Yes. Great. Um, but actually, um, I found it difficult because, you see, um, what makes your playing distinctive is the kind of fills that you can put in, you know, within, uh -huh. like, um, like you'd be playing a certain pattern, right. but then you'd put in certain kind of fills, yeah. which only you would do so. Uh -huh. You're also involved in um, Anderson, Bruford, Wakeman, Howe. Yeah. And um, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I noticed that the, uh, the style that you were playing in uh, at the time were you know the same even though the music was very different yeah. um, that it was different from like the early days of yes when you were playing the uh, the same songs like especially the live yeah, album uh -huh. like um, there's um, um, the, the song Heart of the Sunrise Heart of the Sunrise yeah uh -huh. and actually you're credited as um, a part of the composer yeah yes yeah and so you must have had something to do with the actual composition I did yes. I did yeah um, but you're playing in a you know a style which is more uh, in the style you were playing with Earthworks in the early days. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, maybe. And, yeah, it came out as kind of like a you know, surprise that some of the, uh, the things on that live album, um, Heart of the Sunrise and also Close to the Edge, you were yeah, also... Yeah, which is the live album from California somewhere, you mean? Um, there's, I think there's only one live album uh, with Jeff Berlin on bass. Right, yeah. right, from California. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, um, you know, it was, it was that, that was like a, a vacation. Vacation. with old friends you know there yeah. was nothing particularly creative about it we were just playing uh -huh. music that was already written yeah on that uh -huh. um, but for about a day or two yeah there was a possibility yeah that that group Anderson Bruford Waitman and Howe could yeah. have really got quite good uh -huh. but then market forces yeah and businessmen and managers yeah insisted yeah. that it had to become yes uh -huh. And that we had to cooperate yeah. with the Californians, Chris Squire and oh, yeah. Trevor Rabin. Yeah. And the whole thing turned into a horrible, horrible mess. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, uh -huh. that's the problem with rock music it's uh -huh. interfering I managers see. and record companies. Uh -huh. um, often, the strange thing that I find about is. Is that uh, like even on uh, the Anderson Bruford Wakeman Howe album, it mm. begins out with uh, words like uh, uh, "Be gone, you power play machine." Yeah, uh, we're not interested in yeah, money and exactly. stuff. Like that. Yeah, but well, that's that's Anderson. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Uh -huh. 
the next thing you know he's he's um he's got a big contract uh-huh. and he needs the power machine uh-huh. you know but he's he's a crazy man oh i see a good crazy man uh-huh. he's crazy but good yeah uh-huh. Are you still writing on the piano? Uh, yeah, oh, yeah. Sure. And all the music on the new CD, The yes. Sound of Surprise, yeah. was written from the piano. Oh. And then I do um, a terrible little demo uh-huh. uh, on a Roland MC 500. Uh-huh. You know, and I mock up the tune. Yeah. Uh, just so that the other musicians can hear it. Uh-huh. You know, then we interface that with the computer and, yes. and Sibelius music software. Oh. Uh-huh. And that prints the chart. Oh, I see. And then we have a rehearsal. Uh-huh. Then we take some uh, some comments. Yeah. Uh, and maybe a change, make a change. Uh-huh. Print out again. Uh-huh. A second draft. Yeah. Another rehearsal. Uh-huh. More input from the other music suggestions. Yeah. Input. Third draft. Yeah. Finish. Uh-huh. Rehearse. Yeah. Go on tour. Yeah. 20 cities in England. Yeah make the CD uh-huh. two three days I see yeah so I noticed that uh, the CD was made in four days the new CD uh, at yeah. the Livingston uh, Studios w- yeah well the yeah. yes correct yeah. correct it's it's a performance yeah. you know, every track that you hear is uh, one take only all the way through yeah you know and the drums have to be yeah. what they are you know yeah. the mistakes and everything yeah so you go for a feel of, of the overall track yeah you know, so it's pretty fast. Yeah. Um, uh-huh. So, um, like before you started writing on the key- keyboards, um, like like in the you know so- songs like uh, "Heart of the Sunrise" and right. so on. Um, uh, how did you take part in the composition? Well, in those days, and yes. this is the problem with rock music, uh-huh. is that everybody would sit in the rehearsal room, yes. waiting to find out uh-huh. what to play. Uh-huh. You know, with nothing on paper, yeah. and nothing written, uh-huh. and this takes hours. You uh-huh. know, and somebody has a bass riff, you know, yeah. and the other guy says, "Oh, that's good. I'll play the keyboard like yeah. this." Uh-huh. And then the other guy says, "I hate that." Uh-huh. You know, let's do this, and yeah. then there's an argument. You know, yeah. and then you start again. Yeah. And people would contribute ideas. Yeah. You know, so for "Heart of the Sunrise," um, I would I would have come up with some riff ideas, Dan and Dan and da 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 da. Or whatever it was, you know, uh-huh. I can't remember which bit I wrote. Uh-huh. You know, maybe that was me. I, I don't remember, but uh-huh. you know, obviously, I had contributed enough yes. to warrant yes. some composition credit. Uh-huh. So these would be just lines and riffs, mostly uh-huh. bass bass ideas. Oh, I see. I'm, I'm a drummer, yeah. so the next thing I hear is the bass. Yeah. You know, then I hear up uh-huh. that way. Up uh-huh. through the music, drums, bass, yeah. chords, uh-huh. melody. You know? Yes. So I came to melody last. Uh huh. But now uh-huh. I find I'm good with the rhythm. Great rhythmic ideas. Yes. Okay with the tunes. I like tunes. Yes. I think there's some very strong tunes on yes. Sound of Surprise. Yes. But my my harmony is okay. Uh-huh. But sometimes Steve will uh-huh. revoice the harmony uh-huh. to more sophisticated oh, yeah. harmony. Uh-huh. Particularly on on ballads. Uh-huh. Mm, yes. A more sophisticated jazz harmony. Yeah. So that's my weak spot. Uh huh. Melody's cool. Rhythm's cool. Mm-hmm. Well, what's the, uh, the British jazz scene like at the moment now? Like, how would you uh, see it now? Um, often, actually, you know. Um, I would hear more about more experimental or more avant-garde jazz rather than uh, something which is more straight. Uh, um. Like what? What are you hearing about? What do well, you call uh, well, not, rec- not recent things actually. There, there are things that from before though. It's uh, uh, things like De- Derek Bailey. Uh, and Derek Bailey. Yeah. yeah. yeah and characters um, like that. Yeah, and I've also met people like Steve Beresford. Uh, Steve Beresford. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Sure. These are good, good characters. Yeah. Who. Have taken jazz and done yeah. something with it. Yeah. The, the problem with the British jazz scene is the problem with British. Uh-huh. Um, that I think they, the musicians, still think of themselves as inferior. Oh. And they don't need to. They are world class players. Uh-huh. 
but sometimes they are rather small minded. Mm -hmm. We are a small island, a little like Japan. Yeah. Small island, and sometimes we live in the shadow of the United States, you know, musically. Yeah. And uh, it's a small scene, yeah. not much money. Mm -hmm. People like to sit around and yeah. bitch mm -hmm. and complain, yeah. you know. Whereas the great attraction of Earthworks yeah. is that I can get. Yeah. Mark Hodgson, Steve Hamilton, Patrick Lahar, I can get them out yeah. of England uh -huh. and give them a platform yeah. in which to improve themselves yeah. in Tokyo, Los Angeles, Rio de Janeiro, and yeah. everywhere else. You know, yeah. This opens their ears, yeah. and they become bigger players yeah. as a result. Uh -huh. you know, so they like to be in Earthworks, uh -huh. yeah. and I like to work with young musicians yeah. who are not too formed in their ideas. Uh -huh. So it works well. Yeah. You you do whatever you can yeah. to make the music work. Yeah. You bring whatever you can yeah. to make the music work. Yeah. You take in influences all over, yes. and you try to make the gig. Yes. You know, it's yeah. it's you're a musician. Yeah. Um, you do what you have to do. Yeah. Only later on, yeah. a year later, do we yeah. say, "Oh, well, that was you know that because this oh, yeah. and, you know it's yeah. with these interviews with people like you." Yeah. It becomes clear what yeah. you may or oh, may yeah. not have oh, yes. done, mm -hmm. but when you're doing it, yeah. you know, when you're doing it, you've yeah. booked the studio time. You've got musicians coming. You yeah. need a tune. Yeah. Write a tune yeah. now. Yeah. You know. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I've got a drum pattern. It's great. I yeah. really love this feel. How can I make this a tune? Yeah. Okay, so it's this seven rhythm. Bam 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 da 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 bam 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 da 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 da. Okay, now let's put that in six eight. Let's put in the bass. Good. Let's have the melody. You know, yeah. It's you're just working. Yeah. Yeah. Later on, you worry: is it post bop? Is it oh, fusion? Yeah. Is yeah. it rock? I don't care. Oh, yeah. I don't yeah. care. Uh -huh. I just don't care. Yeah. I've got a gig to do. Yeah. Wednesday night. Yeah. It's how musicians always work. Oh yeah. Yeah, of course. Um, you know, I just you know talking about this the style of it or the kind of format of it, the outside form of it. But uh, I do hear a lot of you know different things in into <laughs> it. Like sometimes uh, I noticed in one of the songs on the CD that uh, it kind of reminded me of King Crimson actually, the melody Maybe. line. Um, even though the style is in a different style and uh, there's uh, no rhythmic changes. Like which uh, which uh, it was, uh, <laughs> fourth fourth number? What's fourth it, number. Uh, um, I don't remember what's the fourth. Maybe it was the fifth number. Half. Uh, half life. Yeah. Boom. 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 Da 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 I think it may be that um, I have to leave something I really love yeah. in order to do something that I love even more. Uh -huh. Sometimes in order to be something, you have to stop being something else. Yeah. Um, you know, to be a butterfly, you yeah. somehow can't go on being yeah. a chrysalis. Yes. You, 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 you've got to become a butterfly. Yeah. And uh, I don't think I can be in King Crimson and do what I want in Earthworks at the same time. Uh -huh. It's not possible in here. Uh -huh. You know. Yeah, I see. But King Crimson, uh, a lot of influences from King Crimson, and often I hear myself yeah. saying yeah. in Earthworks yeah. many of the things you would say in a King Crimson rehearsal room or that was said to me. Oh, I see. Many philosophical ideas about Philosophic music. Ideas. You know. uh -huh. Doesn't matter, jazz, rock, who cares? Yeah. Um, One's played with amplifiers and one isn't. Yeah. It's the only difference. Um, could you cite an example of a, like a philosophical idea that uh, uh, you've said to the members? Uh, well, no. 
it's no. it's no, it's it's no. Uh, it's it. It happens so it's more in a situation. Of attitude. An attitude. attitude to the music. Yeah. Uh huh. Don't play unless you have to. Yeah. Don't play until you hear something you want to play. Yeah. If you don't play, if you don't hear anything, don't play. Mm. Mm -hmm. For example, um, in an interview that I read somewhere, um, uh, you mentioned that often journalists would uh, lump King Crimson and Yes and Genesis <laughs> and the same thing, and that you've been in all three, yeah. and that you could find um, that you can think of three different bands who do things in uh, three can, completely can different ways. True. Yeah, yeah. Uh, can you cite uh, like an example of that? Well, uh, um, Yes was a and still is a vocal group yes. modeled on the Beach Boys. Yeah, King Crimson. Essentially, was a uh, jazz avant-garde group, uh -huh. much more interested in the music uh -huh. than the singing. Uh -huh. yeah. Yes, was more interested in the singing uh -huh. than the music. Yeah. Whereas Yes would use a major diatonic scale, yeah. King Crimson would use a whole tone scale. Yeah. Um, one had its basis in the European avant-garde, yeah. and the other had its basis in American pop music. Yeah. The Beach Boys, Fifth Dimension. Vanilla fudge. Uh -huh. This is completely different. Completely uh -huh. different way of working. Yeah. In a rehearsal room, yeah. with King Crimson, there's very little talk. Oh. A lot of playing. Uh -huh. With Yes, a lot of talk. No playing. Oh, I see. <laughs> I mean, they're completely different. You know, uh -huh. the philosophies are different. Uh -huh. uh, and Genesis, in King Crimson and Yes, yeah. we just all thought Genesis were just like copying us. Oh, uh -huh. They just seemed to be doing everything that we did. Uh -huh. you know, so we thought they were really too late. Oh, I see. Too slow, too uh -huh. late. Of course, they're the megastars now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. uh -huh. um, but how was, it, how was it like when you joined them for the tours? Because there, I think that there's quite a number of bootleg albums and live albums which have uh, you playing on it. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, well, I was... Uh, it was okay. I, it was the first time I'd ever played somebody else's music uh -huh. that I had had no compositional input uh -huh. and felt no emotion for. Uh -huh. With Yes and King Crimson, I was so intensely into the music. Uh -huh. yeah. um, with Genesis, I was just like a studio guy. Oh, yeah. You know, here's your check, uh -huh. play the notes, uh -huh. we'll call you when the bus leaves, uh -huh. we'll call you at the airport, uh -huh. you know. Here's your position in life. Uh -huh. And I th thought that was very strange. Uh -huh. So I was very badly behaved. Oh, really? But it wasn't uh -huh. their fault. It was my fault uh -huh. entirely. I was very young. You know. uh -huh. And I didn't, I wasn't comfortable being in Genesis. Oh, I see. It came at a bad time for me. Uh -huh. I, I knew I wanted more, yeah. but I didn't know how to get started. And then I got started with Feels Good to Me. Ah, oh, I see. Yeah. You know, I, I knew yeah. I wanted to be a leader and a writer, yeah. but I didn't know how to get there. Uh -huh. So I was marking time in Genesis. Yeah. I see. Um, actually, in a recent interview somewhere, I think that Phil Collins uh, was saying about his early days and that he wanted to be like you. <laughs> that, uh, yeah, he would yeah. go see the Yes uh, concerts and one time you left Yes or something and then he went up to John Anderson and said that uh, he's heard uh, he's been listening to Bill Bruford and he can play he all could the, uh, yeah uh, Phil was great uh, yeah good drummer <clears throat> yeah he did yeah and Genesis was very influenced by Yes uh -huh. and I was very influenced by King Crimson uh -huh. mm. so it's quite different yeah. yeah but I suppose it's okay that it's all called progressive rock yeah but uh, the, the philosophies were quite different. Uh -huh. And that shows now, because really the most artistic group now is King Crimson. Uh -huh. The one with its heart in the right place. Uh -huh. Yes is now a parody of itself. Mm. You know what a yeah. parody is? Yes, I, yeah. It's like when you go to see them play, and I have done once, uh -huh. it's like watching a cover band. Ah, uh, of themselves. Yeah, a cover band playing their own music.